The Richardson Highway runs from Valdez to Fairbanks. We pick up the Richardson Highway at the Glen Allen Junction from Palmer. The scenery is out of this world, the 115 miles to Valdez. Before entering Valdez, we stopped at Old Valdez, then continued on to New Valdez. We visited a museum displaying the effects of the destructive earthquake hitting Alaska on Good Friday, 1964. Valdez was located four miles east of its present location until the earthquake centered in Prince William Sound and measuring 9.4 on the Richter scale caused massive underwater landslides sweeping over and engulfing Valdez, killing 33 people. Later, the Army Corps of Engineers determined the town should be moved to more stable ground. Valdez is the shortest gateway to interior Alaska by the Richardson Highway and the most northerly ice-free port in the Western Hemisphere. Construction of the 800-mile Trans-Alaska Pipeline started in 1974 and was completed in 1977 ending at the main terminal at Port Valdez. Oil gravity flows into tanker ships and we all remember the Exxon Valdez oil spill in 1989. Valdez economy depends on oil, government, tourism, and fishing. The five plus mile long Dayville Road across from Valdez has camping, picnicking, fishing, roadside benches, scenic views, bears when the salmon are spawning, the salmon hatchery, ending at the guardhouse restricting public access to the Aliaxic pipeline terminal. We spent a lot of time at the salmon hatchery, mainly because I'd never seen so many fish in one place in my life. Everywhere in the water there was salmon either swimming, trying to get upstream, or dying. At the fish hatchery, the fish ladder went up about 20 feet to the holding tank where the fish were lifted onto tables and harvested for their eggs to be put in the spawning beds. Pink salmon egg take total was about, the goal was 230 million eggs, 10 to 15 million per day. Eggs per female is 1,700. Male to female ratio is 1 to 3. This area is only one tiny area from the thousands of rivers along Alaska's 6,400 mile coastline where millions of salmon are heading upstream to spawn. Alaska has a longer coastline than all the other 49 states combined. We catch sight of a mama bear with her three cubs. About a week earlier, it was reported a grizzly mama bear with four clubs were seen, but probably left because of too many people. There, one goes in, there, the, there are the three of them go back in the timber. Mama bear's a little worried about something. Something spooked her a little. She's looking around, seeing what's happening, surveying the scene and decides to go back to eating again. There was a number of people along the road here taking pictures of them when we were, so something's spooked her. There comes one cub bear out to be with Mama. There's a second cub bear behind the grass now coming out to be with Mama. There's the three cubs. Mama Bear and her three cubs. Checking into the Columbia Glacier sightseeing tours, the Lulabelle was our choice and it turned out to exceed our expectations. Captain Fred has conducted over 5,000 tours in the Prince William Sound since 1979. As we leave port, we pass by several salmon processing plants. Later, at this Peter Pan, we brought a case of frozen salmon to take back to Phoenix in our deep freeze. Your breath is taken away when you enter this beautiful yacht, and it is a yacht, decorated in teak, 
mahogany and oriental rugs, deluxe seats and all the trimmings. It's easy to move around the wide surrounding decks and the upper vista area. Captain Fred is noted for his lively entertainment as he shares history and many interesting things about the sound throughout the day. The crew is relaxed with no apparent schedule other than helping us and later prepared fresh baked goodies. The yacht is powered by two huge diesel engines. I forgot the horsepower, but you can see by the wake we are traveling about 30 miles an hour. Their exhaust goes into the water and there is no sound or smell. An example of the many beautiful waterfalls we pass by today. Then Captain Fred takes us cave exploring to see the birds and bats in the caves and a close-up of a special rock formations. Next is the noisy sea lions. And it is not long before we start seeing small floating icebergs getting bigger the closer to the glacier we get. The Columbia Glacier is one of the largest tidewater glaciers along the coast starting at over 10,000 feet in the Chughawk Mountains down to sea level. It is 37 miles long and 2,000 feet deep. A tidewater glacier flows down a valley into the ocean. In 2001 it was moving at 100 feet per day. It presently is slowed to 2,000 feet per year and is the second fastest glacier in the world. Glaciers are like bulldozers by lifting, carrying, and depositing soil, rocks, and debris on the leading edge in piles called morans, a shallow underwater ridge. About 1980, the Columbia Moran stopped and retreated from about 12 miles out into the bay. The captain told us the ocean depth was only 65 feet as we passed over this moran. About 2008, the terminus or the mouth at that time was perhaps 12 miles from the shore and began to float with large chunks of ice breaking off. This will continue until the terminus is back on land, possibly around 2030. Presently, the terminus is floating about 9 miles from shore. Now, we're, we're a quarter mile away and uh, we'll hold it here. This gave us time to relax, uh, get some goodies from the galley, take some more pictures, visit with the passengers, even got some Christmas card possibilities here while we was uh, watching for the calving of the icebergs. Nice and relaxing. <laughs> Back up! Back! She's sending her off the ramp. <laughs> Do a Titanic. Oh, he's gonna shut her down. <laughs> we got some more action. Look at that! Look at that crack that's going to clear up there. See, it's getting bigger and bigger and faster. Yeah. We're gonna see that piece fall here, straight from the top. That crack's going up the top. It's heavy. That would be exciting. Yeah. Here we come. That big piece. Well, that's breaking up, but watch this, look at that. Here we go. Oh, you got it. That's at the top. Here we go. Oh, there it is. Look at that. There it is. Look at that. Here it is. There it is. Oh, you got it. Got there, I don't want to give you. <laughs> Hang on to yourself. Uh, we have a uh, rental uh, surfboard. Uh, right here it comes. There it comes. Look at that. Oh, look at the wave coming. Oh, look at the bill. He's firing up his old engine. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow, that did. Look at that boil. Look at the boil. Look at the boil. Did you get that? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> I got the whole thing. What about this? Bev was taking pictures with the uh, still camera, and she was able to get two perfect shots. The first time the iceberg goes into the water, it kicks up a big dark cloud of brown 
And then when it comes up the second time, it's not quite as big, but it was uh, just perfect for these two shots here for the uh, glacier calving. The part of the ice that's in the water or underneath the water turns out to be a bright blue when it comes up and so it's really a bright blue when it comes up and surfaces. Quite a sight to see. And now it's time to head back to port.